Hello there, you once more welcome to the Glory Rain Devotion Moment. This is a glorious day, wonderful day, beautiful day, and I just can't wait to read the scriptures so much embedded in the Word of God. Yesterday we were done with chapter number 12 of the Gospel book of John, and now we are moving on to chapter number 13. And it's interesting because chapter number 13 speaks about, you know, the uh, the, the, the event that led to the crucifixion of Jesus. And, you know, when somebody is about to die, they say the dying words, I mean, the last words of a dying man are very precious. They reveal to you secrets. They reveal to you mysteries. And they are wonderful key and, you know, roadmap leading to outstanding success and the unearthing of treasures. So I want you to take out some time and listen carefully for the words of Jesus taken from the Gospel book of John, chapter number 13. And so we commence reading, and the Word of God says from verse number 1, Now before the Passover feast began, Jesus knew, was fully aware, that the time had come for him to leave this world and return to the Father. And as he had loved those who were his own in the world, he loved them to the last and to the highest degree. This is something amazing. He loved them to the last and to the highest degree. Now, he knew that it is time for him to round up his ministry and to prepare to go to, to, to be with the Father. But his eyes were on the ones he had spent three and a half years or so with. And the Bible says he loved them. He loved them. What a love. There's something about Jesus. His, his, his love is contagious. His love heals. His love delivers and brings salvation. That's why he died on the cross, because he loved you and I. Verse number two says, So it was during supper, Satan, having already put the third of betraying Jesus in the heart of Judas, he scared Simon's son. Verse number three. Now, take note of that. That Jesus knowing, Jesus knowing fully aware that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was now returning to God. Verse number four goes on to say, now take note of that. Verse four says, God up from the supper, took off his garments and taking a servant's towel, he hastened it around his waist. Then he poured water into a washing basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the servant's towel with which he was guarded. Take note of that. Just when he knew it was time, he did something very unusual. He took the towel, tied it round his waist, and got himself in the position of a servant. And we should do that a lot, especially those of us who find ourselves in position of leaders, leadership. It's showing us the example of a servant leader here. And then he stooped low, got the basin, and stooped low and was ready to wash their feet. This is amazing. When he came to Simon, Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are my feet to be washed by you? Is it for you to watch my feet? Amazing, serious question. And verse 7, Jesus said to him, you do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later on. Sometimes we think we know, sometimes like we think we are smart, sometimes we think we are fast, but we are far behind. And he just wants us to understand. And if we will follow, we will get the message. The next verse says, verse 8, Peter said to him, You shall never watch my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I watch you, you have no part with in me. You have no share in me companionship with me. Verse 9, Peter 
Simon Peter said to him, Lord, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my feet too. Jesus, verse 10, Jesus said to him, Anyone who has baited need only to wash his feet, but is clean all over. And you, my disciples, are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was, who was going to betray him. That was the reason he said, not all of you are clean. Interesting. Once Jesus was going to watch Peter's feet, Peter was like, you are going to watch my feet? And Jesus told him, if I don't watch your feet, then it means you are not part of me. You have no companionship with me. When Peter heard that, Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, even my head and my hands. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I love Peter for the way he responds. Once he realized the reality of the situation, he just, he just would do, I mean, do the necessary amendment and be in the right position and just, just what he did. Beloved, you don't want to be out of the place of fellowship with the Lord. He showed us a very good example here, and that's the example of his seventh leader. His seventh leader want to take those that are with him along, all right? It is not the one that lords over them, but that one that wants to make them become part and parcel of the companionship that, I mean, they actually become his companion, all right? Jesus is like, I need to watch you so that you become. It becomes obvious that, look, you're important to me. When, once Peter got to understand that, he was ready. He was really ready. There's something about fellowship with the Lord. There's something about intimacy with him. And once our feet are watched by the Lord, then our lives are taking this, what he was trying to demonstrate to, to us. And when Peter saw that he was in trouble, he said, wash my hands, wash my hands, wash everywhere, not only my feet. Jesus said, the person who has taken his bath need not his head and hands be washed. All right, so it implies that literally they have taken their bath, okay? In, though, though they were in the Middle East, in the dry and arid region, they have taken their bath. That tells you that Jesus and his disciples were not smelling. Please take note of that. They were clean. So, but because you walk in the desert land, when you get uh, into the house, you need to wash your feet so that you don't bring in dust into the house. All right. And so he took the position of a servant to wash their feet. And that tells us that in the Jewish homes, when people come in from outside, especially where you have people who are, who are living uh, well, I mean, they, they are not poor, that poor, they, there's water pot to watch. And they have servants to help to do that. Remember the water pot in chapter number three, all right? No, chapter number two, where Jesus sent the water to wine, all right? So he took the basin and watched them. And he said, all of you are clean except for one. And we all know that who that is, Judas Iscariot. Please, don't be the one that is not clean. Don't be the unclean person in the midst of God's people. Let Jesus watch you. Starting from the inside, let him watch you by the blood he shed on the cross of Calvary. Accept him as your Lord and Savior today and let the glory of God flood your life. I decree it is well with your body, it is well with your soul and your spirit till I come your way again tomorrow by the grace of God. I'm eager to wait. God bless you.